And just a little over two weeks ago, India's Chandrayaan-3 lunar probe made a stunning touchdown in the unexplored south pole of the moon, a small robotic probe far away from home embarking on an epic adventure. And since then, since that historic landing, it's been tirelessly toiling away. The tiny explorer has been pulling off a moonwalk that would make Michael Jackson proud, relaying information back to planet Earth and teaching us scientists secrets about that bright, shimmery object we all gaze at every night. Chandrayaan-3's Vikram lander and Pragyan rover are in deep slumber, resting through the 14-day lunar night. As for the wake-up call, mark your calendars, because the big event is expected around the 22nd of September. But while the lander and rover take the well-deserved rest, let's just get you the details of what all they have discovered so far. The first discovery, and this is interesting, a suspected moonquake among many vibrations recorded by the lander. One in particular caught the scientists' attention. The lander seismograph seems to have recorded a very small seismic event. It was recorded on the 26th of August. ISRO suspects it was a small moonquake or it could be the impact of maybe a tiny meteorite. But such events are expected on the moon. As per ISRO, the source of this event is under investigation. The second discovery, testing by the rover confirmed the presence of sulfur. The rover also found aluminium, silicon, calcium, iron, among other elements. Now, sulfur's confirmation is really important here because it is a key element of molten rock. Researchers think that primitive moon was covered with a thick layer of hot molten rock. And this molten rock later crystallized to form the moon's surface. Measurements of sulfur concentrations can provide insight into that process. However, it's also possible that the sulfur came from asteroids. And therefore, the question arises, is the sulfur on the moon's surface intrinsic, volcanic or meteoritic? You see, sulfur is also a volatile element. It easily vaporizes and escapes from the atmosphere. The proof of sulfur might give some hints about how the moon was formed and how it evolved. It could actually be an indication that there is water ice on the lunar surface. Lunar water could serve as a source of oxygen. It could mean possibility of human life on moon. The third discovery, the temperature at the moon's south pole. Understanding lunar temperature is important, especially if we talk about human settlements on the moon. The Vikram lander is fitted with a temperature probe. That probe contains 10 sensors and is able to reach 10 centimeters below the surface of the moon. Now, preliminary data shows that during the day, the temperature, in fact, is around uh, 60 degrees lower than at the surface. Measurements so far have found that the temperature at the surface is significantly warmer, warmer than what was recorded by NASA's 2009 Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, as per reports. And lastly, a thin layer of ions and electrons swirling near the lunar pole. The probe on board has done measurements of density and temperature of the moon's ionosphere. ISRO has reported a relatively sparse mix of ions and electrons. It has been found in a 100 kilometer thick layer of electrically charged plasma, the plasma that surrounds the moon's surface. As per the initial measurements, density was found to be about 5 mn to 30 mn electrons per cubic meter. It is lower than the Earth's upper atmosphere. And before we go further, let me just tell you a little bit about the ionosphere. On Earth, the ionosphere is home to the charged particles in our atmosphere. It's where the Earth's atmosphere meets space. The sun cooks gases until they lose an electron or two, creating a sea of electrically charged particles. It stretches roughly 50 to 400 miles above the Earth's surface, in fact, right at the edge of space. It plays a role in our everyday communications, radio, GPS signals, etc., and it's home to many of our satellites. Let's now get back to the moon. ISRO says that the density seems to vary as the lunar day progresses. If humans were to inhabit the moon ever, the density of the ionosphere would affect lunar communication and the navigation systems. But what do the scientists say? 
They say that the spare plasma means that potential delays would be minimal and that it would not pose a problem for transmission. India's robotic explorers are in deep sleep, but their awakening depends on a game of chance. Waiting for the sun's return at the end of this lunar night, temperatures near the poles plummet to a bone-chilling minus 253 degrees Celsius. And neither the Vikram lander nor the Pragyan rover are equipped with heaters, and so their survival hinges on sheer chance. Still, in their two-week mission, Chandrayaan-3 uncovered so many lunar secrets. It has been an extraordinary historic journey. Regardless of what happens at the end of the lunar night, Vikram Lander and Pragyan Rover have etched their mark in the field of space exploration. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.